Hey everyone and welcome to this new video. In this video, we will dive deeper into the world of DIY projects once again with a very special project. Today, we are going to make our electricity, water and gas meters smart. Basically everything that has a meter oh, and we're doing this for very little money and actually not much effort at all. I'll show you how it all works after the intro. As always, have fun. So, a meter that is at home and that you want to make smart always sounds like a dream idea. And I have already digitized the electricity meter that we have here. It has an IR port that blinks, if you have something like that as well. I will link you to the video I made about it. But of course, that is an idealistic view. Most people live in somewhat older houses where the technology simply isn't that advanced yet. And I am not aware that water meters have any kind of interface. In any case, it would be really cool if you could do it just like we do. Read a 10-digit display simply by looking at it. For this, one would naturally need some form of artificial intelligence or a camera. Sounds extremely complicated and like a lot of high-tech equipment would be needed. At first, I think of some kind of huge camera that would have to be installed. And for the AI, maybe a Raspberry Pi or something like that. It definitely sounds quite expensive and quite elaborate. That was still the case until recently. But microcontrollers have improved and become smaller, more energy efficient, and someone has actually succeeded. The entire project we will discuss today is called AI on the Edge. So it is literally on the edge, because I really can't even imagine what must be happening in the background for it to work. It is truly an incredibly elaborate project. So great praise to the person who developed it. What we need for this, in any case, is the ESP, which we have also used in some other projects, and an ESP, CAM. As you can see here, this is a super, super small camera that can be connected to the ESP. Importantly, this is a special board that also has a corresponding connection. I will link it for you below in the description. You can get a pack of two for around 15, so it's actually quite, quite cheap. However, there is a disadvantage to this setup as we do not have a USB port here. To install everything, we need to connect a USB flash adapter. I will show you an image of how to connect everything. It's easier if you simply order a board that can be plugged onto the pins here, giving you a USB port to flash everything. We'll do that in 2021 as well. We connect it to a Windows computer because that's just the easiest option. There is already software available that you can download, start, and then you can flash the three files onto the ESP. First, we need to delete it once more, and afterwards we can upload everything after a restart of the software. With that, we have already established the basic framework and can almost use the ESP. What is still missing is the SD card. It should not be too large. I would say a maximum of 16 GB. You need to copy the contents of the SD card folder, and especially the Wi-Fi configuration is included there, which we need to enter here. Once we have done that, everything should be ready. We can connect the whole setup normally with 5V, either through the USB port or via the two pins ground and 5V, and now we just need to attach it somehow to the water meter. I will also link a cool print template that you can easily print yourself. Then it fits perfectly on the water meter, and you can adjust the height with different units to either move it further away or bring it closer. Now comes the configuration part of the whole setup, because the camera here actually has a focus that can be adjusted manually. However, it is not made very well because someone thought for some reason that hot glue should be smeared on it. That's why there is a small drop of hot glue on the focus ring, which needs to be loosened with a bit of jiggling. And then the focus can be properly adjusted as the water meter is ideally relatively close to the camera and therefore the focus needs to be adjusted accordingly. Now we can also connect to the web interface. There we can configure everything by entering the IP address of the ESP and then we will reach the configuration page and can start setting everything up. First of all, we need to take a reference image. To do this, we click on create new reference, then the light on the ESP. Should turn on, and after a few seconds, the reference image should appear. Here we need to play around a bit. First, we need to adjust the focus to ensure the image is nice and sharp, and set the brightness by turning down the flash brightness to minus one or minus two, depending on what fits best. We also need to adjust the rotation so that the image is nice and straight. You just have to fiddle around a bit until you get it looking reasonably good. Once it looks reasonable, and you should really take your time with this, you can click on the next step. And here we need to choose two reference points that are as far apart as possible, so that if something shifts, 
the AI can automatically recognize how much the image has shifted and can then automatically adjust your UND markers. Now we can start with the digital meter. Therefore, let's go through all the numbers and try to ensure that the inner red circle encloses the number as closely as possible and that the line in the middle is centered on the number. Let's do this for each individual number. Only three pieces were specified here. Accordingly, we would need to click on Create New ROI. I named it Digit 4. Then adjust everything again and create a new one. And when we have finished that, we click on Save All to Config Ini. Then we click Next again. And now we can set the analog meters. 2001, we will do this one after the other. Start at 0 0.1, then go to 0 0.01, and then to 0 0.01. The last analog 4 is not necessary in my case because the meter simply doesn't have one. This means I just clicked on Delete ROI and then Save Config to Any. In the next step, I can now adjust the configuration again, insert MQTT, and check everything. I'll do all of that later. That's why I pressed Use and Save Config again, and in the last step, selected Leaf Setup Mode and Reboot to Normal to save everything and restart the ESP. This takes about five seconds, and then we will be on the main page. Here we can see all the circled meter values that it has recognized, both the digital and the analog ones and then it would also show which values it has recognized. In the next step, I went to configuration and configured my MQTT server. Finally, we need to integrate everything somewhere, because right now the data is just being thrown into Home Assistant. That's a bit boring, we are using Home Assistant here, so I'll also show you directly how it all works. I'll include a template for you in the description below, you just need to insert it. Unfortunately, you can't simply install this with a plugin or something like that. Instead, we need to go into our Home Assistant version 2021, then to the file editor. If you don't have it, you'll need to install it. And then we need a sensor here. If you don't have that yet, just type in sensor and then platform MQTT name, water meter, state topic, water meter main JSON. That's where everything is packed by default. And the value template, that is where the value comes from, is in value, JSON value. So that means from a JSON value, the value is value. The unit, which indicates what kind of value it represents, is M. And the icon is a water icon. Save everything. Restart Home Assistant once. And when I go into my overview now and enter water meter, I can already see 3997.585,000 here. And as you can see here, the value briefly changed because I turned on the faucet for a moment. Let me briefly show you the MQTT Explorer again. Here you can also see the water meter main JSON, and then there is the value value, which reflects the current reading. You will also get the timestamp and a few other things, but we don't need those. The value is enough for us. And just like that, we have the water meter integrated into Home Assistant. If you have any questions or if anything is unclear, feel free to write it in the comments below. As mentioned, it works in principle with any meter, whether analog or digital, as long as the analog meter is round. It doesn't have to be a water meter. Theoretically, it could also be a gas meter. There are also templates for that, which I will include in the description below. Otherwise, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, I would really appreciate a rating, 2001. And then I would say, see you again next week, hopefully this time on Wednesday at o'clock. Until then, take care and ciao.